You know what I've been loving recently? Doing less. Stressing less, perfecting less, caring a little less. My goal for this week, and all throughout these winter months actually, is to take most things less seriously, which is quite a challenge for me by the way, and instead take more yoga classes because it really teaches me how to be instead of do. Take more time to make pumpkin pancakes and get lost in books because sometimes I forget how big the little things are. Take more time to hang out with mother son because if anyone deserves more love, it's our moms. Giving myself the space and room to feel how I feel and all the time I need to process it because healing is a messy journey. Taking moments to breathe, to calm down, to say everything's gonna be okay. And I wanna take more time every day to reflect on what and who I'm grateful for and celebrating all the wins. No matter matter what shape or size, because we tend to forget we're actually doing more than enough. And I'm so happy you're taking the time to join me. A side of pancakes with your baking powder. You know what else I've been loving recently? I've been loving living my life instead of posting about it, which I know is ironic because that's literally what I'm doing right now. And it's how I make a living, so it's a little bit awkward, but I just love learning about and talking to real people instead of watching their stories on Instagram. Sometimes I have the urge to just delete social media because I feel like life would be so much simpler. I don't really consider myself a social media user. Most of the people in my life, I don't even follow them on social media. I just text them and don't get me wrong, I get so many ingenious recipe ideas and inspiring quotes and cool new editing inspo from Instagram and YouTube, but I always find my mood is just better and my head is clearer and I feel like myself so much more when I do things that make me forget about my phone. I feel like the minute I click into an app, I feel more disconnected to what's important to me and I'm suddenly being presented with hundreds of opinions and lifestyles and things I need to buy and people I need to be and productive things I need to start doing and workouts that are going to fix my body. You want hot yoga in like five minutes but i'm hungry oh no did i not bring my chopsticks no okay let me eat my shrimps with my hands still delicious you gotta feel and I think the things and the trends that we consume, whether we intend for it to or not, whether we like it or not, they impact the way we think and the way we live and the way we feel about ourselves. There are parts that I absolutely love about social media. I can catch up with you guys and I can share all the fabulous things I consume, like this farro and caramelized sweet potato toasted walnut goat cheese salad featuring the plumpest pears because it's pear season, everyone. A very underrated season, in my opinion. Ah, I lost some farro. I lost like 17. But yeah, anyways, if it weren't for social media, I also would have never come across the term de-influencing, which is a trend where people discuss why trending products are a waste of money and shouldn't be trending. And I think that is too awesome. And we need to keep this going. We should also be de-influencing overhyped diet trends and unrealistic morning routines and productivity and aesthetics and beauty ideals. I feel like the world could really use oh fewer influencers oh and a lot more de-influencers. Autumnal salad. Like cozy and refreshing and time. Please leave me alone. I just want to watch Gilmore Girls and eat my pumpkin bread and drink my tea and be some quiet. You listen. As you guys know, I'm not a big fan of most health trends, but something that is never not going to be cool and trendy and healthy is taking care of your body. My health is something that I've taken for granted for so many years while I focused on my physical appearance, my work, my productivity, making other people happy, all before taking care of myself. This is just a little kind thing I do for my body every day. It takes three seconds, okay? Taking my vitamins. I need to share with you guys care of super cute and convenient personalized vitamin packs, who are also the sponsor of today's video. You just do a little quiz to fill out some information about you and your goals and your body, and they pinpoint the exact vitamins for you. And I love how they come in daily little packs that are compostable, and it just makes taking care of myself so much more convenient and simple. Right now, my vitamins are focused on taking care of my joint health because I move a lot, a probiotic blend for gut health, iron because I've been low in iron for forever, and rhodiola to help with stress, promote energy and focus, and support recovery after exercise. I really do prioritize taking my vitamins because I feel like it's the least I could do for my body. It's crazy to think 
your body has never even taken a minute's rest from taking care of you. Do you know how many things your body is doing at this very moment to keep you alive and well and helping you process all these random words I'm saying? And all it really needs from us is for us to support it and take care of it. So yes, you can use my code LINDASUN for 50% off your first order at Care of. And you guys know I cannot survive without protein oats and pancakes. And Care of has protein powder. My muscles love it, my workouts love it, my taste buds mm, love it. Oats are so creamy. <laughs> You know, we see all these people on social media living these majestic, aesthetic, perfectly curated 15 second lives, or they have mindsets or study habits or bodies that we so badly want because we think we would be happier or smarter or more likable or healthier if we had what they had. But will spending your money on these materialistic goods or energy on shaping your body or time copying their diet really make you happy? De-influencing is what I feel like I just always kind of naturally did. Don't get me wrong, I think the viral feta egg and pasta are wonderful additions to the social media space, but most of the things in influencers are influencing you to buy or to do or to stop are unrealistic, unsustainable, a way to get more views. And a lot of the time, it's just a lot of BS. You don't need that makeup product to be beautiful, to make your room look like an influencer's to enjoy your living space. You don't have to make your routine as jam-packed to be doing enough. You don't have to make your breakfast Instagram worthy. It looks all the same to our stomachs anyways. Most of the time, real people don't have the time or money or privilege to have a perfect seven day week workout split and get in 10,000 steps daily. And you don't need that to be strong and healthy and to reach your fitness goals. You don't actually need to drink protein shakes and detox with lemon water or only consume the darkest of all chocolates to have a healthy diet. There is no shame in eating real dessert made with real butter, pancakes without protein powder, there's no shame in not eating vegetables some days, there is no shame in not constantly striving for self-improvement or a glow up or a different body, there's no shame in resting, there's no shame with scrolling first thing in the morning. I mean scrolling first thing in the morning and sometimes late into the night is definitely not the best thing for my health or productivity or sleep, but I'm pretty sure starting off and ending every day ashamed and guilty because of it is worse. If only I just listened to no routine or trend is worth punishing yourself over. No diet is healthy if you're stressing over it. The workout routine isn't right for you if you dread every second of it. Instead of doing these things to be better like other people, maybe do things that make you feel like a better version of yourself. If I can influence you to do anything, it would be to be on your own team. Root for yourself. Be your biggest fan, your biggest crush. Boom. Be on your own side and put yourself first. I eat vegetables because I love myself. I eat peanut butter and ice cream and make cute breakfasts because I love myself. I make time for yoga and workouts and Milo cuddles because I love myself. I challenge myself and take breaks and do less and drink more water and listen to my hunger cues because I'm learning to love myself. And when so much of the online world is trying to feed off our insecurities and sell us things that they're trying to convince us will make us love ourselves more, the best thing you can do for yourself is to already love yourself enough. And one of the best things I did for myself today was try the single serve Greek yogurt pumpkin cinnamon roll to see how good it could really be. And she was yummy and super duper fluffy and I don't think a cinnamon roll is ever the wrong decision, you know? <laughs> At this point, the internet and social media will literally tell you everything is bad for you. From bananas, to tea, to how you sleep, to the time you're eating your food. You know, shutting off all that noise and really turning inwards and learning what works for me instead of being told what's good for me has made me so much happier. If a rule or routine or lifestyle or person is causing you more stress than joy, how good and healthy can it really be? Oh my god, beautiful. Oh my goodness, are we seeing this? So these are like apple cinnamon donut pancakes. Dip them in cinnamon sugar. They apparently taste like apple cinnamon donuts. Dude. Oh God. It's really, really insanely yummy. Sometimes I find it's really helpful actually to question why I'm doing things. Like why did I think eating late at night was illegal? Why did I believe I had to burn off my food with more exercise? Why did I think her body was better than mine? Why did I never do arm workouts? And it's almost creepy to notice how much of my life and my beliefs have been influenced by big fat toxic lies and diet culture and constantly shifting definitions of beauty and health and success without me even realizing it. So while I eat this vermicelli noodle bowl that was 
sweet and tangy and so refreshing and just ridiculously good. I'm gonna list a couple of trends I find are also a little ridiculous. Big butts. Of course we love strong glutes, but why are we obsessed with making them bigger and rounder? Dude, that's so good. Nice. Do I actually like butt workouts more than every other kind of workout? Or is it for the big butt aesthetic? And there's nothing wrong with aesthetic goals, but I don't want one body part to mean so much more to me than the others. Yeah, yum. Also, this snatched waists and anti-bloating trend makes me want to punch a brick wall. Like, this totally ignores the fact that we have unique body types and that our stomachs change with meals and periods and stress levels. Healthy simply doesn't look like having a flat stomach for everyone. Cottage cheesing everything. I love my high-protein cottage cheese pancakes, and getting enough protein is so good for you. Protein pasta is good. Mm. Protein pancakes are good. But protein stress? is not. Confusing an aesthetic body with health. Many of the shredded influencers with your dream body are far from mentally or physically healthy, and just because someone looks fit doesn't mean they should be giving out fitness advice or that they know what your body needs better than you do. Anyone who's promoting highly restrictive diets, like not properly fueling your body and never being satisfied after eating is not sustainable, and honestly, dieting and food guilt are worse for you than whatever it is you're eating. Take a breath. Step back from your feed, the food scales, the workout program, whatever that influencer said, and check in with yourself. Is your fitness journey, social media feed, the food you eat, serving you, bringing you joy, making you healthier physically and mentally? Or is it draining you and making you constantly feel like you and your body are not and never will be good enough? Oh my god. Candy. Oh, Tiana. Mommy, look how good I ate this pear. Whoa. Proud of myself. We are almost in 2024 and I feel so old and like a baby at the same time. But what is also so old is the idea that weight loss and being smaller is still associated with healthier, happier, prettier, and better. It is something I'm still working on myself. I need to remind myself sometimes that like a more toned me is not a better me. I shouldn't love my body more if I lose a couple pounds. There's no prize for eating less. You are beautiful and I don't mean the way you look. Transformations don't have to be physical. Actually, the most important transformation are not things you see, but something that you feel. Every time someone compliments someone's body, they are reinforcing the idea that the shape and size of our bodies are yeah. things that define our worth as humans. We are better or worse, prettier or uglier. We are more lovable if we look like this. It smells so cinnamon rolly. That's so fire. Oh my god, look how cute they are. I think at this point, we should understand that taking care of your health should have nothing to do with how your body changes in the process. Healthy and strong and attractive mean different things to different people, and our health and well being aren't things that can be accurately reflected in our appearance. We can't see what's going on inside our bodies, our gut, our muscles, our minds. You don't know what kind of battles people are fighting inside their minds. You don't know people's stories. You don't know if they lost that weight in a healthy way. Mm, it's so soul warming. You don't know if they struggle with food guilt, restriction, over exercising, low self-esteem. You don't know if food consumes their every thought. You don't know how hard it may be for them to eat breakfast. Maybe they haven't had the energy or capacity to eat enough because they're struggling with their mental health. Maybe they're going through an extremely stressful period in their lives. You can't tell how healthy a person is by how they look. I've been paranoid, you like a Polaroid. As a highly sensitive overthinker who's been heavily impacted by other people's words both in real life and online, what one person considers to be a harmless comment can quite literally change someone's life. Every time someone told me I looked pretty, or so fit, or glowed up, or anything about my body, it just reinforced to my brain that skinnier and smaller was better, that I had to keep eating less to be noticed and work out more to be loved. And I think hyping each other up for how we look doesn't have to be toxic at all, especially if you're implementing healthy habits for your own happiness and to improve how you feel in your body when you aren't doing it out of a place of self-hate but self-love. But words 
do hurt sometimes, and they do have impact, and they can make a difference. When I compliment someone's appearance, it's never about their body. I'll say, I love the color of your eyes, your new haircut slays, blue is so your color. And my favorite compliments to give and to receive are always non-appearance-based, always. I feel like I can be myself around you. You have such great energy. You inspire me. I love how excited and open and kind you are. I admire your passion and drive so much. You have such a beautiful soul. You make me feel safe and seen. Thank you for just being you. Yes, one comment about someone's body can permanently change their relationship with their body, but one kind comment that has nothing to do with someone's body can go a long way too. Buttered on both sides, and I got this like cabbage sloth. Kidney meat pie, sausage roll. After hearing people hype this up for like three years, today is finally the day I'm trying a reformer Pilates. If you are taking care of yourself and fueling and nourishing your body and working on becoming a better you, there is no certain way you must look or size you must be. You deserve self-love at every size and has every version of you. And because we are more than just our bodies, self-love extends beyond how we treat our bodies, but how we treat ourselves. Prioritizing your well-being, setting boundaries, honoring your feelings, giving yourself time. I've been focused on creating more moments where my body feels at ease, putting myself in more situations where my chances of smiling and laughter are higher, creating more moments where I feel at home and inspired. Inspired. Being around people who make me feel good about myself, doing more things that make me feel excited about the future and that I know are good for future me. Create more moments for yourself where you feel most like you. And I definitely feel most like me when I'm consuming something that has peanut butter in it. And this recipe combines three of the yummiest things in life, pasta, peanut butter, and chili oil. Yeah, the chili oil adds this additional Ooh, flavor layer of spicy deliciousness and you just pour it all over and you have this marvelous peanut buttery bowl of goodness. I'm very proud of how it turned out. A little bit spicy, peanut buttery, creamy. And something else I never really talk about is how proud I am of my dad. You guys know him as father son, I know him as my twin, and some other people know him as a world-renowned researcher. There's 54,000 citations placed among the top 1% of the field globally, and it's one of Western's most highly cited researchers. He has trained more than 140 scientists. Yes, I did come to this event mainly for the free food at the end, but also because I am just incredibly proud of both my parents for the life that they've created for themselves and the life they worked so hard to give me. It is seriously the greatest honor of my life to be their daughter. Anyways, after my dad's big shining moment, I forced Cindy to her first hot yoga class and I'm very happy to announce that she is now entirely obsessed with the sweatiness too. I know, we're all tired after work and after school and the only thing you wanna do is to crawl into bed, but making a little bit of time to do these little things, cooking, sweating, creating, reading, chilling, dancing, is so good for your mental health, mindset, mood, energy, and soul. Salted caramel or chocolate chunk? Salted caramel, chocolate chunk. Mm -hmm. I find that most of the time I feel tired not because I've done too much, but because I've done too little of what makes me feel alive. So I make an effort every day to the best of my capacity to do things that remind me of why I love being alive or just do something nice for myself, big or small, with a friend or alone. And most of the time, I'm not gonna lie, it is alone. Please, Milo, give me some space. No. Sorry. I've found healing can sometimes be very lonely. A lot of it is done on your own time and in your own head. And it requires you to try new things. And sometimes there won't be people to do those things with, and that's okay. And I have grown to love and cherish my solitude, but 
Sometimes I see a really funny reel on Instagram, or I get some really exciting news, or I bake some really fire banana bread I wanna share with someone, or I need to rant about this really annoying guy, and I go to my phone and realize I don't have anyone to share these little moments with. And those moments for me, are hard. So if you feel like you don't have that right now, you know, that group of friends or your person, you're not alone and you won't feel like that forever. And if you do have amazing people who have your back and a person who you can share the funny reel with or who celebrates your little wins and who you can talk to about anything and just gets it, make sure you cherish that because it's very rare. I think what I tell myself is that there's this period in everyone's journey where they need to go through a lonely chapter. It's when we are so different because we are starting to do new things, so we don't really fit in with our old set of friends, but we are not quite developed enough to fit in with our new set of friends. It's like the lonely chapters in the middle, and they are hard, but they are also very necessary. We need to go through these chapters to go from who we once were to who we want to be. It's quite uncomfortable, but it can also be quite incredible to know that you're getting closer and closer to so many cool opportunities and unexpected friendships. And in the meantime, we get to do what we want to do. Sample new hobbies and explore different parts of ourselves. We don't have to compromise or share the dessert with anyone. Oh my god. Oh, it smells so good. Wow. And as someone who has tried so hard to fit in with a crowd and kind of always felt a little left out, I feel so lucky and so grateful that I've found that I fit right in with me. And I really do believe healthy relationships with others form after you get to know yourself a little more and how to respect yourself. You'll know your boundaries and you won't let other people cross them. You will set an example for how you let others treat you by how you treat yourself. I read this quote that I just love so much and I needed to share. It said, your 20s are the craziest years of your life. Some of your friends are still in school, some are married, some have completely different lives. Some of your friends are not your friends anymore. You had to live a certain way all your life and suddenly your life could be whatever you wanted to be. It's not the sexiest pizza, but... You dreamed of all the things you would do, and you're doing something completely different. Everything in your 20s will change. You will meet people, you will lose people, you will try plenty of things you haven't before, and you will fail at most of them. You will love and lose that love, and learn to love yourself too. You will feel lost, you will feel so lost all the time, but you will grow through it, and you will become a better person for it. Let your 20s be whatever it is they are. Wild, random, crazy, nothing, everything, and a complete emotional mess. Let yourself be introduced to a life you don't know about yet. The goal is not to have everything figured out, but to be open to everything. Oh, Love hard, try hard, play hard, self-care hard. Eat everything, regret nothing, but keep learning. Believe you can do hard things, date yourself, and most importantly, let yourself have fun in the process. This is so yummy. Wow. I'm not even kidding, it's really, really good. There are so many exciting things that are in store for you and that is so beautiful. But I think there's also something really beautiful about honoring exactly where you are right now. You don't always need to be fixing what's wrong, changing for the better and healing everything that hurts. Sometimes being with yourself is the most supportive thing you can do. You are not a project, you are a human and it's okay to slow down. Take a break, all the growing and working and improving will be ready for you when you choose to resume. And don't be so hard on yourself. It's your first time going through life too. I think you're doing a really great job. And I think you are exactly where you need to be. I love you. I'm proud of you. And go eat a pear because they're so freaking good right now. And we'll eat together again very soon. Bye guys. Bye. Bye.